Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about load velocity profiling. It's a really popular aspect of velocity based training and super useful for coaches and athletes. It allows you to predict someone's run one repetition maximum, but you can also do that quicker than traditional methods and it's less fatiguing for the athlete. So you can do it in season for instance. With a low velocity profile, you also learn a lot more information about an athlete. In particular, the velocity that they move at, their power and the force they produce at a range of different weights. So if I take a look at my low velocity profile for a back squat, I can estimate my 1RM from the velocity cutoff or my minimum velocity threshold of 0.3. And I also can see an estimate of what loads I would move at different velocities across a range of different weights, which can help us focus in on power, strength speed, speed strength, or pure strength when you're training. So it's a super useful tool and a great way to profile and understand an athlete. Okay, so if you look at an athlete's low velocity profile, you can actually predict their one repetition maximum. So in this case, for my back squat, it's 152.5 kilo because my minimum velocity threshold is 0.29 meters per second, which is approximately what you'd expect for a back squat. But beyond that, we can actually see at any weight what velocity I can move it. So for instance here, if I wanted to work out what velocity I can move 120 kilos for, we would see 0.61 for 115 kilos, and then I can start to understand different areas of power, speed strength, and pure strength training as well. So it's a very useful profile that gives you tons of information about an athlete. Before we jump into capturing my low velocity profile today on the overhead press, obviously you're gonna to have to check you have some basic kit to get you a low velocity profile. For me, and for overhead press, that's this rack, the barbell, and most importantly, our velocity-based training tool, in this case, the output sports unit. It measures a lot of things, but the velocity-based training module is one of our most popular features in output. Prior to me actually starting this, I'm gonna make sure my shoulders and triceps are warmed up to be safe and consistently ready for any time I capture this profile. When you're capturing a low velocity profile, you have to get a range of loads and weights with a minimum of three sets of exercise. Today, we're probably gonna get four. Okay, so first set at a slightly lighter load of 20 kilos. Let's see how fast I can move it. For the first two reps, to show you the importance of max intent, I'm gonna move a little bit slower. But from there onwards, I'm gonna try and move the bar as fast as possible. Three, two, one, ready. So I'm moving slightly slower there, which is not max intent. And now I'm gonna start moving properly. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up. And let's see which my best rep was in this set. So in this case, my fastest rep was an average of 1.53 meters per second, which is what we'll see later on go into my low velocity profile for the overhead press. Okay, so I've rested after my 20 kilo set, and now I'm aiming for a load somewhere in the middle of my load velocity profile. So I've put 20 more kilo on the bar to bring the total load to 40 kilo, and we're gonna see how fast I can move this load. Again, max intent is crucial with every rep. We're gonna use two to three reps to get my best velocity. Three, two, one, ready. Okay, so I'm gonna re-wrap the weight here. And then if I look at this set, uh, it's actually my last repetition was the fastest, 1.22 meters per second, which is the one that we'll then put into the load velocity profile later. Okay, so set number three, two to three reps at a higher load, and we're gonna see how fast we can move it. And again, max intent is crucial. Three, two, one, ready. Okay, so it's three reps complete. The best one there was my second rep, 1.1 meters per second. So that's what will be going into my low velocity profile for 50 kilos. We're gonna go for my fourth and last set now. The weights have been moving well, and the last set you wanna make sure is over 80% of your 1RM. So I'm gonna go for 65 kilos here, and we're gonna see how that affects the velocity when I'm listing. So again, max intent. As the loads are getting heavier, as a coach, you only really need to focus in on one or two reps at the higher loads. So that's all I'll do with 65. Let's see how fast I can move it. Again, max intent being key here. Three, two, one, ready.
Okay, so in this case, my first repetition was 0.67 meters per second, and the second was 0.57, so we'll be taking the first repetition from this set in the low velocity profile. I know I said the last set was my last one, but I actually surprised myself and moved the bar 65 kilos faster than expected. So I put 70 kilos on the bar and what we're aiming for in the last set is a velocity less than 0.5 meters per second, but it does have to be my max effort. So let's see how I get on with 70 and hopefully that completes my load velocity profile. Three, two, one, ready. Okay, so it's actually 0.58 meters per second. So we'll take that now as my last repetition. Goddamn shoulders, huh? So now we have all the sets that we'll need to build my overhead press load velocity profile. So I'm gonna pack up the weights here and we'll head back and look at the data. We're gonna look at the sets that I just completed in the gym and build a load velocity profile, focusing on mean velocity versus the load I was lifting. So the first set I did was 20 kilos. And you remember that I said max intent is really important. So the first couple of reps here are actually too slow and they wouldn't go into the load velocity profile. My fourth rep, however, is my fastest one and that's the one that goes into the profile. I'm gonna select the rest of my sets now and for each one, it'll be the best repetition that goes into the load velocity profile. So I've got 40, 50, 65 and 70. And now all those sets are displayed together on the screen but I'm going to look at how this looks when we profile the load versus the best velocity from each rep. And then you get your load velocity profile, which is this linear fit from the lightweight up to the heaviest weight that I lifted. So there are lots of ways to interpret a load velocity profile. One of the ones that coaches always like to do is estimate an athlete's one rep max. And for this, you use a minimum velocity threshold. In the overhead press, that's approximately 0.2 meters per second. So to get my RM from today, we would find out my velocity when the bar is estimated to be moving at 0.2 meters per second. And that comes from the linear fit profile that we have on the screen here. But it's not only about the athletes moving heavy weights slowly, it's also about how fast they can move the lighter loads. So if your program is working and focusing on power, strength, speed, or speed strength, you'd also expect the whole curve to shift upwards. Um, which means that, you know, if I was moving 20 kilos today at just under 1.6 meters per second, if I was doing a speed focus program, that might shift upwards to 1.7, 1.8 meters per second. And the whole curve might also shift in relation to that, showing an improvement thanks to the training that I'm doing. If an athlete's fatigued, the whole curve can also shift downwards. And there are also lots of other ways you can interpret the data from a load velocity profile, looking at other metrics like power, force and work. However, today we've just focused on RM prediction and then using velocity to predict the load that you can lift it at, and then how the curve might shift due to fatigue or improvement in training. If you find velocity-based training and other athletic development topics interesting, be sure to check out our website, outputsports.com, to learn more about our technology, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel as we'll be posting more and more of this educational content as time goes on. Okay, that's it. See you later. Bye.